but it dissolves the rubber or the plastic on the plunger as well. So do you really want to keep that in the syringe for a multitude of days or a whole week straight? No, of course not. Vigor Steve here. So I see this question pop up sometimes in the comment section. So I'll make a quick video to address it. Many of you guys want to know how to store your gear safely and if you can preload your syringes. So to address the first question, many of us, including myself, we have a performance enhancing drug drawer that we can lock with our own key. So we can keep all of our PEDs in the same spots, but keep it away from other people in the house. Now, I only live with my wife and she has access to all of my performance enhancing drugs if she wanted to. Uh, obviously she doesn't want to, but if I were to have kids, uh, this is a drawer I can lock. And if I have uh, unwanted guests or guests in the house, it's also a drawer I can lock so they don't have access to all the performance enhancing drugs that I have laying in the house. Some people prefer to put their performance enhancing drugs in a safe somewhere so they feel even more secure, that it's uh, in a very uh, limited part of the house that only they have access to. The hidden benefit of having a draw or a, a safe place for your PEDs is that it's generally the same temperature and that it's dark. So you see that on the product's um, description and storage methods of most of the pharmaceuticals is that they mention store between a certain temperature and to keep them in a dark and cold place. Now the peptides, whether those are the healing peptides or the GLP-1 receptor agonists to reduce your appetite or the growth hormone, the insulin, the IGF-1, etc., 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 anything protein-based, keep it in the fridge. Not for the sake of keeping it cold, but for the sake of keeping the temperature stable. Because insulin and a pharmaceutical growth hormone, nortitropin, genotropin, they can actually be kept outside of the fridge. But if you live in a place where the the temperature fluctuates, like here in Thailand, for example, as soon as I leave this room, I turn the air conditioning off and the temperature fluctuates from 22, 24 degrees, maybe up to 30 or 35 even. And that's not something I would subject these peptide hormones to, especially the more expensive peptide hormones like IGF-1 or growth hormone. So I keep all of that in the fridge just to keep the temperature stable. And I know that after reconstitution or the peptides which are already constituted, they don't degrade due to the temperature fluctuations. So you store all of the peptides in the fridge. Feel free to purchase a mini fridge that you can put in your bedroom so nobody else has access to this fridge or you buy a fridge with a lock. Those are available as well. You put all your peptides there. Don't freeze them. You don't put them in the freezer. Only Iplex, that's IGF-1 compounded with the IGF binding protein for better delivery. That's frozen and that's probably the only peptide that's supplied in a frozen state. Everything else needs to be reconstituted, but you want to keep the temperature as stable as possible by putting it in a fridge. And then all of your performance enhancing drugs, you keep that in your PD drawer or your safe that you can lock that only you have access to that is dark and reasonably temperature stable. Don't put your steroids in the fridge because some of these steroids might crystallize and fall out of solution, they crash. And then what are you going to do? You're going to heat them up, right? And then put them in the fridge again. So they crash and then heat them up, crash again. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's a good idea, uh, right? It's better to buy pharmaceutical grade products that it doesn't happen to. And if you crash your gear uh, through your own fault because you put them in the fridge, well, you can um, right heat it up to a certain extent by yourself once, but not over and over and over again, because I'm sure the oil, the carrier oil will um, not be too pleased and then turns inflammatory nonetheless. So just keep the steroids in the drawer that only you have access to. And if you live in a very cold country where it might still get right, five degrees Celsius, for example, to the point that the oil gets very, very thick and almost impossible to inject, like castor oil, for example, in testosterone inotate formulas. I remember having that in Holland where it's five degrees, <laughs> three degrees sometimes because you didn't turn on the heater during winter and then this oil is super super thick now you have to heat it up and you can do that by holding it in your hands and just being patient until this oil heats up enough so you can inject it with a syringe of a smaller gauge right so you don't have too much scar tissue you don't want to go draw that uh, thick oil with an 18 gauge 
and then inject that with an 18 gauge. You'll, you'll be limping, really. It's not a very pleasant experience. Not I've done that myself, but I've heard other people talk about using an 18 gauge or 16 gauge. And that sounds pretty brutal, I'll say that. So if you need to just heat it up holding your hand or dip the vial or ampule in lukewarm water to heat up the oil so it's ready for the injection. And until then, you just keep it in the steroid drawer in its original packaging because the original packaging, the vials or the ampules, have been designed to hold the solution containing the anabolic androgenic steroids long term. That's why the expiration date is generally on the product. And that expiration date might last three years or five years after manufacturing, right, depending on the product, because all of these products are stored in glass. Vials and ampules are made of glass, not plastic, not plastic syringes. It's stored in glass. First world pharmaceuticals, third world pharmaceuticals, and underground labs all present anabolic androgenic steroids in glass. That is the best method to preserve and store steroids, whether they're oil-based or water-based. So what about preloading syringes then? Syringes are made of plastic, Steve. What am I supposed to do? I want to have all of my syringes for the week lined up in front of me, ready to use, so I don't have to go through the process of cracking up or ampules or vials and then drawing and then maybe transferring to an insulin syringe, etc., etc., etc. I want to do that shot as quickly as possible on my way out of the door. You can preload syringes, don't get me wrong, you can preload syringes. It's simply not the best way to store your steroids. And ideally, you store them in glass right up until you're ready to inject. But I understand it's not always possible because we can take myself for an example. I use a quarter ampule of Bayer testovirin three times per week. So I don't even use a full ampule Bayer testovirin per week. So I transfer this 1.2 milliliters from a single ampule of Bayer testovirin out over four syringes containing about 0.3 milliliters each. Then I top each syringe off with a full ampule of Bayer remobolin, another 1.2 milliliters. So I front load all of these syringes and then I store that for the next two weeks, right? I usually make these four syringes on the morning that I need to do an injection. So the first out of four, I inject basically when I'm done, right? I, I get that out of the way. And the other three syringes that are now preloaded, I put them in my steroid drawer and then lock that because that's for personal use. Now, castor oil, benzoyl benzoate and benzoyl alcohol, that's, from my experience, no problem to keep that in a syringe for, well, in this case, almost two weeks. But some of the other carrier oils, it might be a severe problem because ethyl oleates and some of the synthetic carrier oils, not only do they dissolve the ink uh, from the outside of the syringe, so that's an easy test you can do at home, does it rub the ink off a syringe? Might still be MCT, which also rubs the ink off a syringe. Then you draw this oil into the syringe and just leave it there for a week. The rubber stopper at the end of the plunger, right, that moves the oil in and out of the syringe, might get dissolved. To the point, the rubber or the plastic, whatever it is, separates from the plunger and ends up in the oil. And many years ago, I was injecting one of my pre-filled insulin syringes and I saw a chunk of this plunger come off and just slowly migrate towards the injection needle. So I pulled this out, I threw the whole batch in the trash and I threw all of the product in the trash as well. Because this solvent is so potent, not only that it dissolves the ink off your syringe on the outside, but it dissolves the rubber or the plastic on the plunger as well. So do you really want to keep that in the syringe for a multitude of days or a whole week straight? No, of course not. Of course not. You're going to be injecting whatever else. Well, this is the rubber stopper. You can see what else is leaking from this plastic into the oil that you're now injecting. Right? So that's an even more horrible practice than just using this oil by itself. Now, if you preloaded your syringes with this synthetic garbage that is now dissolving the, the insulin syringe or the syringe into the oil and now you're injecting this now you're injecting plastic so yeah i'm sure you guys can tell that i'm horribly traumatized from all these things 
Right? The, the, all these things that I had to figure out the hard way because everybody was online was like, yeah, just preload your insulin syringes for the week and you just pin it on your way out of the door. And then by the third injection, you literally see all this gunk floating towards your quad or shoulder or wherever else I was injecting. So yeah, never again, dudes. So I would advise you guys to do the same. Check the carrier all first. Steven is broken record of carrier rolls, but another reason why to pay or you need to pay attention to it. If the carrier oil is organic, and again, you just run the test of whatever product you have, preload a syringe, whether that's an insulin syringe or a 3ml syringe, preload it for a week with whatever product that you're using, leave it in your storage drawer in a dark place with a stable temperature, and then a week later, check if the plunger, right, this little rubber plunger, starts separating or not. If it starts separating, throw everything away. And now you already know that it's a very potent solvent and you shouldn't be using it. My shortcomings here is that I don't know if MCT oil causes the same issue because I haven't used MCT oil in a very long time and I've never preloaded insulin syringes with MCT oil. I've preloaded insulin syringes or normal syringes with castor oil or grapeseed oil or sesame oil or cottonseed oil. And none of those carrier oils dissolve the rubber stopper. So I'm assuming none of the plastic is leaking within the carrier oil that I end up injecting because I've preloaded the syringes and I left it in the steroid drawer for a week on end. But with these solvents, this happens for sure. So it's my fault that I don't know about this MCT, whether that's suitable for preloading syringes or not. So I'm going to ask you guys for this little favor, you know, the vigorous crew to the rescue, so to say. For anybody out there that has been using MCT for a while and has that laying around the house by any chance, please preload an insulin syringe and a normal 3ml syringe, leave it in your stereo drawer for a week, and let me and everybody else know whether the rubber stopper dissolved or not. And if you already know this, please let me know down below in the comment section, because it's something I can't figure out myself because I don't have access to MCT over here. And I'm, this video is a little bit early for me to order uh, stuff online and run this experiment for myself. So if you guys can do this experiment for me, highly appreciate it, guys, because I'd really want to know so I can recommend some of my clients and everybody else, right? A community experiment so we can uh, find out a higher truth. Because I know that preloading syringes is a possibility with some of the carrier oils that are being used by pharmaceuticals or compounding pharmacies. But with MCT, I'm not really sure. And I know several compounding pharmacies and reputable underground labs use MCT. It doesn't cause systemic inflammation, but I'm still unsure whether it dissolves the rubber stopper or not. So please let me know, guys, so we all know if it's suitable for preloading or not. And again, long story short, pharmaceutical carrier oils, you can preload your syringes, but ideally, you keep these oils within the glass container, whether those are ampules or vials, as long as possible, because those are designed for long-term storage. And then if you need to preload a syringe because you're using an ampule, only half an ampule or a quarter ampule, like in my case, and you have to preload four syringes in advance to transfer the content of the ampule somewhere else, right? make sure that you're limited to organic carrier oils that don't dissolve the rubber stopper. And if you're not really sure, there's plenty of places where you can buy sterile vials that are under vacuum. So you just transfer the ampule into a sterile vial and then draw as needed. So you keep it in glass for long-term storage. And then whenever you need a little bit more um, oil, right, with the active pharmaceutical ingredient being testosterone, androlone, or whatever else, and then you simply draw as much oil as you need from your sterile vial, and then you inject that pretty much immediately. So it's contained within a glass container as long as possible, minimizing the risk of any of the plastics leaking into the carrier oil, right? So food for thought, I really hope this helps. Hope this answers the questions that I see uh, repeatedly pop up in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're looking for the most comprehensive guides to bodybuilding pharmacology, you can find the eBooks on my website, vigorousteve.com slash shop. Personalized advice always available through consultations. You can find the rates in the consultations section. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Vigor Steve. 
Have a look at my link tree with all the sponsors and affiliates that I'm associated with, companies that I believe in. If you're looking for over-the-counter supplement XYZ, I'm pretty sure there's a link and a discount code for it, right? So look no further than my link tree. Thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, Vigorous Crew, you guys know what to do. Much love, much appreciation. Front double bicep for you guys. Um, I store some anabolic steroids in here, but they're being metabolized as we speak. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.